Hi VC Dale, Gate433 back with another video and uh, yes yeah, this is going to be a fines video, I've done a several or a few threads videos recently, thought I'd do a fines video and I really should do a new and new reissues uh, fines video because I've got a few of those stacking up there but this is a uh, another boring old charity shops car boot sale stuff, nothing earth shattering I'm afraid. Um, yeah car boot sales are kind of tailing off now, the one I well, the one I've been going to last couple of years finished uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, I've been back to my old stomping ground uh, and that finishes in a, in a couple of weeks. But um, yeah, it's getting, getting a bit thin on the ground anyway. So um, yeah, this morning um, didn't find much. I found a, a few seven inch singles, which I'm just going to show now just because they're a bit of a bit of an eclectic mix. Uh, and then the rest of the video, I'll just show a couple of charity shop records and eight um car boot sale records so the seven inch singles that i found this morning so there was a there was nothing really i went round and round nothing and then saw a little plastic box of um or you know one of those seven inch single boxes had a look and it had a real i say a real eclectic mix of stuff in there and i got these for about a pound each um so first up is sex gang children and into the abyss and Deicher, i presume you pronounce it i don't know so this is a custom label there and there. Goth, yeah, Goth, 1982 Goth single. I've cleaned, I've sort of quickly cleaned these and played them when I got home. And um, yeah, it's all right. It's not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it yet. I might, I might not. Um, next up, so, so that was Goth. Now we're on to Stax. So a nice Stax promo. Oh, what is it? You know, is it Booker T and the MGs? Who is it? It's um, it's Warp Nine and the theme from Star Trek. So um, yeah, with um, Para Song I on the flip side. Yeah, this is all right actually. Um, it was a bit thin. The themes from Star Trek Trek in, in its sound. Um, the the B side Para Song I actually sounded um better. But um, yeah. A nice Stax company sleeve anyway and a promo. Wasn't going to leave that behind for a pound. Same with this, wasn't going to leave this behind for a pound, didn't necessarily need it, but a really clean copy reissue of um, Jimi Hendrix All Along the Watchtower with um, Long Hot Summer Night on the backs. So uh, a couple of um, a couple of tracks from Electric Ladyland, as I say, a, a reissue, but really clean. And it's a song that I don't tire of. Um, so uh, yeah, could have been on my video of songs you are tired of and songs you're not tired of. Uh, okay, next up, uh, Depeche Mode single, uh, Get the Balance Right. This is um, a German press uh, on uh, clear, transparent red vinyl, nice and clean, early. So it's an early Depeche Mode single. I tend to go for their later stuff with the album, sort of from Black Celebration onwards, but um, I like their singles from the early years, so that was quite nice. All right, never heard of this. Um, this is 3P Sweet. Uh, and um, Too Close to the Moon, backed with Getaway Car. These are, um, again, badge as post-punk, but sounded a little bit kind of classic rock, pub rocky, kind of post-punk, maybe. Um, but... Uh, it's just got an injection label. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, not sure if I like it or not. The, the Beast of Getaway Car was quite raucous, actually, about kind of stealing money and getting away in a car, and it was a bit kind of punkier than the, than the A side. And then, um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a complete hypocrite now with this last one. So I think in that video I just I mentioned where it's songs you... Songs you've played that you're tired of and songs you've overplayed that you're not tired of. And I think I called out Pink Floyd's Money as a song that I'm tired of and kind of never want to hear again. And then this morning I go and buy a, a seven inch single, but I wasn't leaving home, leaving behind. So I wasn't leaving home, wasn't leaving behind a seven inch picture sleeve Italian uh, Pink Floyd's Money for a pound. I mean, the, the sleeve is a bit battered to be honest this is on harvest but it plays all right it's got um any color you like on the b side so yeah as i said certainly certainly wasn't going to uh 
leave that by behind for a pound and it plays all right so there if you can you know just a week or two after saying i never want to hear this song again i've played it this morning just to hear what the how clean the vinyl was okay a five minute interlude there onto the things i came to show uh, 10 records so yeah i went into winchester a couple of months ago now i think and uh yeah, in the so in in the Oxfam, they they t tend to have the sort of decent stuff in plastic sleeves with ridiculous prices on, and then the other stuff they're all kind of like two pound ninety nine, well no, probably three pound ninety nine, four pound ninety nine, five pound ninety nine, and these were these two here were five pounds each, and this is an album I've been after for for a long time mentally. It's on on the list, but I've never seen it in uh, sort of fairs and stuff, and this is um, Super Trump's debut album, so really clean copy for five pounds it's not an original it's on the slightly later a and m label so i think it's 72 rather than 70 uh but 1970 album and it's nothing it's nothing like their commercial later commercial stuff this is well nothing even like crime of the century which is only like what four years later this is a real turn of the decade classic rock album quite uh subtle it's not it's not um heavy rock it's just kind of really lovely sort of mix of um, light prog, tinge of psych, that turn of the decade. I love, I love the 69, 70, 71 development in, in, in classic rock. I think, it, I think it was a great time before it got a little bit pompous and overblown with the prog uh, a bit later on. But uh, I think this, so this, yeah, really, really enjoyed this album. Uh, uh, yeah, it was very, very pleasantly surprised okay this next album wasn't what i thought it was but it was but it was interesting it's a comp deca comp called hard up heroes uh, and i thought it was kind of like pub rock uh type people but um it's actually um well i'll read the i'll read the hype blurb on the back so it's this album is affectionately dedicated to those bands who made it, the ones who didn't, and those poor unfortunate souls who wasted the most precious years of their <clears throat> of their youth, sleeping rough on clapped out equipment in the back of broken down Bedford vans, ruined their digestion with motorway grease and were always six months behind with their HP payments. There's that. And yeah, and it's so it's got a mix of so on the front they've got all the well known ones, Bowie Clapton, Steve Marriott, Rod Stewart, Joe Cocker, Ronnie Wood, etc., etc., Van Morrison, and then there's a kind of number of sort of one-hit wonders. But um, you know, and it's on, um, it's all mono. It's a, mon it's a mono, even though it's a sort of seventies mono uh, decker, and it covers this period sixty-three to sixty-eight. So these are some of their um, emerging singles for the ones who kind of made it and for the ones who disappeared it was their one hits but it's got you know so it's got a, it's got them the zombies graham bond zoop money dave berry nashville teens honey bus time box doing beggings and that's worth the entry fee alone so for a fiver i was happy to play the pits up and i and i played it all the way through when i was um cleaning records and it was it goes really well if you're not having a cleaning records session it was a really good accompaniment to that Okay, we're on to the car boot stuff now. I think everything here is probably a pound or less. Maybe maybe the odd one might be a couple of quid. Okay, first one is uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes' Love Child. So, yeah, I've had lots of Diana Ross and the Supremes albums over the years, and they've tended to disappoint where they've got one or two good, strong songs and a lot of filler, apart from their kind of earliest album um uh the which i have got a, a beat up american copy of but this was really surprised me so love child is a is a great uh late 60s super Diana Ross and the supreme song and this cover was what attracted me and this is a fantastic kind of you know backstreets harlem type thing i mean she didn't need to have love child on her sweat top i think we got the got the gist of it um from the from the um title etc but yeah really love the cover and um it, apart so love child opens it and you think right that'll be it it'll be a mix of covers and weaker 
kind of Motown songs, but actually it, it hangs together as an album. It has got covers on it, but it's got other, um, if you like, uh, specially written, if you like, Motown tracks that are pretty good. So overall, I really enjoyed this and it's a keeper, which as I said, most Diana Ross and the Supremes albums I've had, you play them once and think, oh, I'll get rid of that. Not that one. Okay, this next one, if I'm honest, I bought it for the cover art, uh, and um, I have played it, it's, but couldn't really describe it. So this is a classical record. So this was a, a day at the boot sale when pickings were thin and I was reduced to going through the classical stuff. I got a few classical box sets um, and this, uh, and this is a gold stamped promo. Another reason to get it for perhaps for future threads and also a a white label promo. This is my first and only white label promo, I think. But this is um, Prokofiev um, Zell, Zell Cleveland Orchestra. But I bought it, as I said, for that artwork. Very kind of, what is it, utilitarian or something like that. Um, yeah, so, um, and it's, yeah, sounds pretty good. But uh, so I'm not a classical music expert, so I couldn't really describe what it is. But it's... Um, it's Prokofiev Symphony Number no. Five in B flat major. If you're interested, um, but yeah. Okay, a beat up, very beat up. Reggae mint, as um, John would say. Uh, Laurel Aitken says fire um, on the Doctor Bird label, uh, but it plays all right. Stick on the mono switch on. Um, it plays all right. It's a bit crackly. Um, you get lots of marks on the on the record as the cover, as you say, has been beaten up, but it's a reggae or ska album, a bit um, perhaps inappropriate, risque lyrics, but uh, if you're in the right mood, it's fairly enjoyable. <laughs> um, and, you know, again, for I think that might have been a couple of quid. So um, it's OK. So from reggae ska to... I don't know what this you could describe their singer songwriter Leslie Duncan Moon, moon Bathing. I think this cost me 50 pence. Um, yeah, weird. I went to a box of records uh, 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 and it was half empty and all just female artists about 50 records, every one female artists. So I don't know if I missed out on the 50 really good female artists because there was some, you know some slightly naffer um but this was in there and i've had a, a few leslie duncan albums in, 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 and not really got on with them but this one is just lovely it's yeah that's how to describe it it's just lovely it's real kind of it's mid 70s 75 or something like that i think so it's got a kind of yeah mid 70s slightly um AOR, quite a light feel. It's um, engineered or arranged by, I think it was a husband or boyfriend, um, Jimmy Horowitz. Uh, and it's got Chris Spedding guitar on it. But yeah, I, so, so I came to this thinking I'm not going to enjoy this. It's going to be another Leslie Duncan album that I'll listen to and get rid of. But I actually enjoyed it. It had a nice feel to it, moon bathing. Um, probably describes it quite well. OK, again, completely changing gear again. Taboo. The Exotic Sounds of Arthur Lyman. So this is an Exotica album, an original in lovely condition from 1959. Again, wasn't going to leave this behind on the Vogue label. 33 and a third micro groove long player. Sounds great. Mono. Um, and if, if you want to. Um, so I think Arthur Lyman was a Hawaiian uh, arranger, musician, vibes player, I think. There he is there playing the vibes. And this is that vibey, exotica sound uh, with Taboo, Kalua, Seabreeze, Mizaloo, China Clipper, Sim Sim, Caravan, etc, etc. But yeah, if you're in the right mood, a nice loungy exotica album in nice condition. Yeah, really happy to find that for, for cheap. Okay, three more to go. 
um, try and get it under 20 minutes Dale uh, so then this next one is an artist that I've struggled with because of the lead vocal sound but this one I, I found I found my album by this artist so again from Exotica to Heavy Rock Judas Priest Killing Machine I've had probably four or five Judas Priest albums and as I say um, Rob Halford's voice tends to be a bit high and squealy for for me uh, and it puts me off this one it doesn't feel it gets doesn't get so raucous and this is a good rock album is it from 78 yeah it's not quite heavy metal maybe it's just virgin on it's heavy rock uh, and i really enjoyed this killing machine so not their best album but let's say i found my i found my judas priest album because i tend to like sort of um iron maiden acdc but never really got on with Judas Priest. Okay, so from heavy rock to Indo jazz, um, Indo jazz fusions. So this is um, Joe Harriet John Mayer's double quintet. Uh, this is a late 60s, when is it? When is it? 67, is it? Something like that. 67 on the wonderful Columbia label, mono press flip back sleeve but a bit battered and the record is a bit battered it plays it plays through solidly a lot of sort of light crackle um, and the odd pop but I mean it's been well battered uh, so but these are quite I say these normally quite bulletproof these 60s Columbia presses um, but what I heard I you know what I really really like so I would obviously like to find a nice copy but a nice copy wouldn't be cheap wouldn't be as cheap as the so the couple of quid I paid for this, but I wasn't leaving it behind a Columbia jazz. So yeah, this is British, British jazz musicians getting in sort of that 60s, late 60s trend of putting sitar and tabla on everything. And that's pretty much what this does. It kind of combines Joe Harriet's sax and sort of a, a British jazz with, um, you know, sitar, tambura, tabla, flute. So you get, yeah, that's what you get all the way through it. And yeah, it's an enjoyable Sunday morning, Sunday morning listen. Okay, and then finally in this sort of eclectic mix is Selena Jones. And everybody's talking about Selena Jones. Uh, this, so it's never, I'd never heard of Selena Jones. And then I went on to, to, to catalogue this and she's done 43 albums. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and um, this was one of her early ones, I think our second album. She was originally from the, well, from the US, US born, left the US because of kind of racial prejudice, um, came to the UK or Europe and kind of just got sessions at Ronnie Scott's. And she's a jazz singer, very like Shirley Bassey, but with a slight more, slightly more soulful tinge than, than Shirley Bassey. Um, but you could compare her to Shirley Bassey. Um, and this is a co complete covers album but it's got, um, oh no, <laughs> no, I'm not shooting this video again. It's got arrangements by, is it John Cameron? It's certainly got one of the, one of the famous library music um, arrangers does the arrangements on this and the orchestration, which what gives it that UK library record arranged feel that um you know Shirley Bassey got with her um some of her albums on CBS so I'd say two-thirds of this is great really enjoyable it does tail off a little bit towards the end where she starts to put a few more show tunes in rather than covers but you know it's all covers but they just come across really well so am I the same girl everybody's talking without him um, obviously a spin on uh, without you my way is even pretty good spinning wheel the more I see you morning dew everyone does that my Sharia more uh, and then say the last four songs probably tail off a bit but yeah re really enjoyed this uh, uh, and um, it was a complete blind buy at a boot sale so that's it so say some some weird and wonderful or not so wonderful weird <laughs> Um, mix of, of records okay I'll be, I'll be back with uh, another one quite soon I might even do it today depends what's going on um, okay cheers VC bye